Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. This week's video is going to be a quick one on wire gauges. We're gonna specifically look at the maximum amount of current that we can pass through a wire for specifically radio control applications. We're gonna look at both continuous amount of current that we can pass through and a 10 second peak or burst amount of current that we can pass through a wire gauge. So let's go ahead, jump over to the whiteboard and take a look at the wire gauge chart that we have here. All right, here we are at the whiteboard and we're taking a look at the wire gauge versus current chart. Here we have up on the board the American wire gauge standard. We run from 24 gauge all the way down to number eight gauge. Now these are commonly used gauges of wire in many different parts of our electrical power system from the battery to the speed control and into the motor. These are common ones that we can see. Typically you would see a 24 gauge wire being used on something like a 10 amp speed control or thereabouts. Whereas an eight gauge wire you'd see on something that is in excess of 200 amps more commonly. So now let's take a look at what we have for maximum continuous currents. These are maximum continuous. That means you can continuously draw this amount of power for the entire duration of a battery pack. So that's very key to what we're defining as maximum continuous. For our 24 gauge, we have 11 amps all the way down to our eight gauge being 200 14 amps and when we talk about the max current and this is going to be maximum current that you can actually pull from these wires under a 10 second time period in which case after these 10 seconds you have to return to something lower than the maximum continuous current in order for the wire to be safe and okay for you. Here we have anywhere from 18 amps for your 24 gauge wire, all the way up to 345 amps for your eight gauge wire. That really completes the chart. So pause the video if you need to see this in more detail. A couple points here near the bottom of the chart. So the wire chart data does not apply to RC applications. What I'm really referring to here as the wire chart data, this is charts that you can download off of the internet. Those charts are not specific to the radio controlled applications out there. This is why this chart is going to look very different than any of those charts that you can find online. We covered this in a previous video where this video is essentially the part two version of that. And then the last point that we have here up on the board is that wire temperatures will trump any of this data that you see here on the board. So something to keep in mind is that if you're seeing high significant temperatures within any of the wires on your radio controlled vehicle, you should probably move up to the next thicker gauge of wire. For example, if you're using 14 gauge, but you're only actually pulling somewhere around 60 amps, but you notice that your temperatures are going over that maximum threshold, and we'll talk about what that number is very shortly here, then you would be best to move up to the next gauge of wire in order to keep those temperatures down. This might be because of the ambient temperature that you're operating in. It might be really hot or you don't have any cooling or there's multiple different factors that can come into play that is not all included within this chart. So another thing to keep in mind there. Now when we talk about maximum temperatures, typically you want to make sure that your wires are not going to exceed 70 degrees, 75 degrees Celsius, thereabouts. And that's for all silicone based wires. So the silicone is the insulation that makes up that wire. Now typically I like to keep as a general rule of thumb all my equipment at less than 60 degrees Celsius and that would be if you follow the imperial system about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's that maximum temperature that I do not want to exceed. In most practical applications we do not operate our radio controlled vehicles at a maximum continuous current value. We are varying the throttle, which means that we're actually reducing the amount of current that we pull from our battery. So that would mean as long as you have your speed control and all the rest of your components 
Based on this value here, it should be conservative enough for you to be able to follow this wire gauge chart so that when you do hit the full throttle maximum, you're somewhere within these values. And for the guys that are really pushing their equipment, you will more than likely go and use this max 10 second burst. In some cases, if you're really pushing your vehicles on some of those straight line speed RC cars, for example, you may be even pushing some of these significant values here but you are limited to a smaller amount of peak or burst time. So something just to keep in mind, this is not going to be a rule that's carved in stone. This is a good guide as to what to expect from wire in different types of scenarios. Well guys, that's it for this week. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.